loads. Number one thing I want to rattle through is this news I've just seen on Hypebeast. Um, seeing as it is Streetwear Fridays, I think, right? Streetwear Fridays today, but anyway, let's go with that. Uh, StockX is to open a physical location, create did create did, dedicated to buy page and sell collectibles. So news from Hypebeast. Now at the moment, um, as reported by um, W wwd magazine right that's the fashion business kind of mag let's get some news up here on the screen there you go so got up in the physical location which you know makes perfect sense with the way the business is going um and it says here the following as reported StockX is making um, some major moves after expanding outside of north america in late 2018 the stock market of things will open its first ever physical storefront in new york city revealed at the third annual stock day event the company announced several major updates including a new nyc outpost and forthcoming vertical uh, dedicated to selling collectibles essentially i already existed our customer wanted more of it says geo ceo just luber luber also recently contributed to our landmark streetwear impact report continued as primary as premier, as premier, as primarily a web business, fucking up my my um, features fucked up. It's great to be closer to our customers and engage with them. We're excited to have New York as our first location. This follows a company's series of American pop ups, which included a stop in New York, and I think they did one here too, right in um, London. Um, the article continues soon. Users will be able to buy and sell beer bricks, cause figures, and more via a review page on the site. A beer new page instead of sifting through the other brands tab. Luba did yet didn't yet reveal a date for the new page, nor did he confirm the opening day of StockX's new storefront in 237 Lafayette Street. However, the company did state that it will launch a fifth authentication center located in the Netherlands and collaborate on an initial product offering in Chinatown market. The other, so, okay, well, awesome. Sneak stuff up in here. So, StockX are launching a physical space. And I don't know, it's interesting because I think there's another YouTuber, I forgot his name, who's also launched his own kind of physical location. It's just interesting to see where Sneaker industry is heading you know it's it being a billion dollar industry but it really i think it sits on kind of shaky foundations if it's my estimation right because i think sneaker culture isn't really what sneaker culture it sneaker culture isn't what i envision it to be and i think sometimes the market gets it a bit fucked up because from my limited experience or knowledge it seems that sneaker industry has only been propped up by the reselling market there's not an actual culture behind it. And I say that because not from any kind of point of snobbery or that, you know, I'm a better collector than other people. But I just say that from the point of like the times that, you know, when I me when I when I grew up and I got into sneakers, you know, my first exposure to them was you know, through like the Crooked Tongues Forum, RIP, you know, one of the best kind of um, online communities for collecting shoes, just talking about shit. It's just like a really cool group of people. In the beginning, it was a bit difficult, you know, because I, I don't know, we were maybe the first wave of young kids that propped up that popped up on the market. And a lot of the guys on there were like in their early 20s, early 30s. So they were like, you know, grown up adults who had kind of been doing the damn thing for a while. We came in all bushy, all bushy tailed, wide eyed. And it kind of gave us a bit of shit, right? And I think it happens more often than we'd like to think it does. And, or maybe not. I think the kids on basement are pretty chill, isn't it? The kids on basement, they're, they're pretty nice to each other. I just think, you know, I just grew up in a time where people were being a bit snarky, right? It's like, um, I'd imagine skate, I'd imagine, um, Skate parks are a lot better, are a lot warmer of a of a place now than they were when I first went to a skate park. Right, you felt super intimidated. Even just going to a skate shop like Slam City Skates, right? They used to be, you know, they used to be such dicks to you if they didn't know who you are. They really hazed you, really kind of run you through the ringer before they accepted. Okay, you were in it for the love, and you weren't trying to, you know, just go in there and trying to, you know, earn cool points. Fair enough. But anyway, when I used to, when I grew up in, um, growing up, when I when I was growing up and I got into sneakers. The thing was, we we got into it for the love of sneakers, right? It wasn't necessarily just because of hype items. Yes, when SBs came along, it kind of messed things up a little bit and some tier zero shoes. But for the most part, people were going out of their way to find dead stock heat. For, like, and when they said dead stock heat, they didn't mean like, they didn't mean a brand new pair of Yeezys. They meant an, an item that no one else has that's dead stock and that's amazing. That's what dead stock heat came from. That kind of eternal phrase, what I um, remember it being. But then, of course, over the years, you know, um, the brand recognized the uh, appeal and the money making aspect of limited edition shoes and just started to churn them out, right? I think it kind of I saw the change in it come from, you know, the year of the dog or the Chinese New Year sort of um shoe. That was a little bit of an add-on that no one really gave a shit about. And then suddenly Nike started to recognize how you know important that kind of shoe was to the Asian market, how important it was to the recent market. And now sorry about surely the value or the attention or you know the amount of detail or the amount of marketing budget that goes into promoting that shit, that shoe every year is insane. And I can't remember a good one for the life of me, right? The Chinese New Year, um, Nike, you know, Air Force, whatever they go on and making. 
So it being propped up on just resale market, it kind of makes me think that if the resale market goes away, will sneaker culture even exist? Will kids care? I don't know if they will. I don't know if they really will because you only have to go to um, one of those, you know, in real life StockX or sneaker reselling um, market things to realize that people only really give a shit, especially kids nowadays, about limited edition shoes. The, the the guy that's got the store with all the quote unquote heat is the one that's really selling all the, is selling the most stuff. The guy that's selling like really great, you know, GR shoes that are now hard to get or shoes that people that flew under the radar that no one was really hyping, they're, they're the ones that don't really make any money whatsoever or don't get their kind of, you know, social media, um, photograph, um, Instagram picture reportage on. No one's really taking pictures of somebody's um, store that's full of like, you know, Air Max 90s they picked up from JD Sports back in the day that are equally as, you know, heat worthy as anything else, right? If somebody had a store full of, you know, infrareds from 2002 and laser blues and all that sort of stuff, or infrared 90s and laser blue 90s from 2002, that I'd think that's a good store, but for some people it's not. And again, that's the thing that kind of bums me out a little bit about the sneakerhead community now at the moment. It's a little bit too much relying on um, hype. And of course, you know, the sneaker brands have a responsibility for that too because they feed into it. But I think by and large, the consumer nowadays just wants the most limited and hard to get shoe, which kind of, again, goes against what being a sneaker addict or being a fan of sneakers is actually all about. But hey, ho, what do I know? So I'm interested to see what the store is going to do because in the future, because again, because if, if the hype goes away, StockX doesn't exist then, does it really? Because why would you want to go, I don't know, no, like they just go like it just turns into like a good hood right it just turns into like an end clothing or like a sense just selling trainers just selling general trainer that people want to buy the whole reason why StockX exists or why it is what it is or go all these other places is because hype shoes are around and you only have to look at StockX to see how you know the um the effect that they've had on the stock on the resale market has been incredible right the prices of re the prices of limited edition shoes has never been lower so StockX has been around you know it kind of because everyone's everyone's got the ability to buy a shoe. They're, they're all, you know, there's more there's more availability of these shoes available on the market because they're easier to sell. You have to sell them on eBay and have to do all that nonsense. I don't know, man. I don't know if it goes away. Like these guys are absolutely fucked, really, for the most part, aren't they? But you know, maybe they know something I don't. But let's see what happens with a new location. It could, it's only going to be again. I I come on here and complain about the lack of stores that we have in terms of streetwear. We don't really have any destinations to go to and just you know catch a vibe feel something um hear someone speak i don't know just how it used to be before you know as as wanky as those places are as much as i hate some of the people that frequent them there was something quite nice and appealing about being in a sneaker space with other sneaker fans as well sharing that communal space you know the catching a vibe you know and just generally having somewhere to go to kind of meet new people that are into the thing that you're into which is a, an, an extreme specific niche of an interest to be into so to be find someone that's like, like like something that you like and you know you can share a little glass of you know um warm red stripe that was a way to go for me on most um thursday evenings but yeah let's see what they do hopefully they i'm assuming they're going to open one in london too and other locations where they have offices that probably make more sense and they can kind of go on from there probably double up as a good little office space as well in it for some of their team as well but yeah that's news i just saw at the moment i thought i'd kind of you know sprinkle in there for your liking